Hello there, my loves. Welcome to our special Cosmic New Year reading. Happy Cosmic New Year. How are you doing? I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. I hope it's all spring-like or autumn-like, wherever you are, because both of those seasons are absolutely amazing. And I got up this morning, I woke up this morning, and I don't have curtains in my bedroom, and I looked and saw this explosion of blossom on my tree. So it's the apple blossom, um, this beautiful white. And it, um, it had already come out a little bit, but this morning it was like a riot. It was like a, a party going on in my garden. So I'm very, very blessed, completely blessed for that. So isn't it wonderful to wake up and to feel gratitude for Mother Earth for the new beginning, this cosmic new year and... Um, we don't always have one of those special reasons, you know, where we're blown away like, oh, wow, this has happened. But I think that what would be really lovely is to start a gratitude practice before you even get out of bed in the morning, just to think about what am I grateful for today? Because it's just such a powerful and positive way to begin, isn't it? So um, what we're going to do today, before I say all my hellos to everyone is to just welcome you to say Happy New Year. And I haven't lost the plot. It is indeed the, the cosmic New Year. So the sun is now in Aries. Happy birthday to all my lovely Aries followers. Anybody watching here or in the replay or on YouTube, happy birthday to you. And we're gonna be doing some special messages, some extended messages to talk about what is coming up for you as part of this cosmic new year, what are some of the really important anchor points, some of the important things that you need to become aware of that are important lessons and blessings coming up for you over this next 12 month cycle, which is so exciting. I've also got an exciting workshop to share, to talk about um, this morning. So I'm going to pop a link to my online shop because um, the link is there then. and you know, because if I do it later, it just loses the link for some reason. But I'm going to be running um, a Mayan astrology two-hour live workshop. If you can't make it live, you'll get a replay. Um, so you get to watch it over and over again to find out what your Mayan astrology sign is. And Mayan astrology is very much connected to your life path, your purpose in this lifetime. What did your soul ask to do before it came here? And also what is the tone of your life, the galactic tone. So it's so exciting. Um, and so you get to have um, your personal information when you join the workshop. I'll be sending you um, your day sign, your Mayan day sign, and also your galactic tone for this life. So I'll do that analysis for you before the workshop. And it's just £10. Um, so if you want to join that, I'll post a little bit about it later in the in the actual thread of the of the page but there's the um there is the link um to find out more about that and to secure your place so let's get let's get going let's say hello to everybody and to first of all thank everybody who's sending me stars i am so grateful thank you i'll get to you in a second <laughs> so good morning first of all to colleen who was the first person she's like a whippet she's up there She's very early where she is, so thank you, Colleen. I really appreciate you being here. And hello to everybody who's watching on YouTube as well, by the way, because I can't see your comments until later, but I aim to reply to them all. So do comment and let me know how you find this, this video and the messages today if you're watching. Karen Williams is here. Good morning, Karen. Good evening to the lovely Robin Steele and Christiane, who are both in Australia. Um, Michelle O'Connor's here. Good morning to you. Good morning to Vicky Ray. Oh, you're so beautiful too. Good morning to Anne McGarry. Hello to Shell Javat. You're an early bird as well, Shell. Um, Amanda's an early bird too. Good morning. Happy Cosmic New Year to you. Weather is amazing. We had a gorgeous first weekend of spring. Yes, we did here too, which is, is such a blessing, isn't it? Um, Nancy Zimmerman, another early riser, and thank you for the stars. You have done that for 28 weeks in a row. And I, that's no small thing. And I do really appreciate that kindness and generosity week in, week out. Thank you so much. And everybody who sends stars, I do appreciate you. And I appreciate all of you for just being here anyway. 
because whether you're sending me anything or not, you're still bringing all your, your good vibes to this. Astrid Twig, hi beautiful to you. Lynn Hardy, thank you so much for the stars, darling. That's a wonderful 18 week streak there. Barbara Phipps, good morning, darling. How are you? Um, Michelle, thank you so much for your stars. So grateful to you. Um, Danielle Bowen, good evening, darling. How are you doing? I hope all is well where you are. Angela Wally is here. Thank you for the heart. Nicole South, good evening, Nicole. How are you doing? I hope you're well. I hope you had a, a really good Sunday. And Monday as well, because of course you've already had your day, so you'll have to let us know how it went. Jane McGuinness, good morning and happy new year to you too. Um, oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the altar. So we've got a bit of obsidian there because we're doing studying obsidian this week, the, the crystal of the week, and this one is electric aura obsidian. It's said to enlighten our, light up our life path. So I need a bit of that this morning. Elaine Sega, good morning. Happy spring and new year to you too, darling. Janine Smelt, good morning to you. Janine saying good morning to everybody, which is lovely. Marianne is in the house. Hello, Marianne. Marianne's always one of the first people to comment and um, on every post that I put up, so I do appreciate that. Um, it's lovely to, I do read all your comments on my card of the day. Sometimes it's hard for me to find the time to, to reply to each one, but don't ever underestimate how grateful I am that you do post and comment. So keep on doing it. Good morning. Um, sorry. Thank you for the stars, Marianne. I really appreciate those. Linda Biles. Good morning. Margarita Jeffries. How are you do doing, darling? And um, Linda Biles, I hope you're well too. Jen Taylor's in the house sending hearts and prayers and flowers. Sheila ha Hamilton's here as well. Good morning, Sheila. Thank you for the stars, Amanda. You are sweet. And thank you, Jen Taylor, for the stars. Oh, stars twice. Thank you. Susanna Martins, good morning to you. Laurie's here. Hello, Laurie. 14 weeks in a row you've been sending stars. I do appreciate you. Oh, she's brought coffee. I wish you'd bring me a coffee here. Can I transport you to go make me a coffee? Chrissy Bonacorsi's here. Good morning, Chrissy. Good luck with your reunion. You got this. Um, Jennifer Sylvia, good morning. Laura Savage is here. Oh, Laura's brought coffee as well. <laughs> oh, what would we do without coffee, eh? And if you're not a coffee lover, I get that. I can totally get that because I'm not really a black tea lover, you know, like a normal cup of tea with milk lover. But I get, you know, whatever we like to drink is a good thing, isn't it? Hazel Kings, good morning to you. Carrie, good morning. Angela Davis, good morning. Fiona Colleen, hi there. Oh, Sue Boys is here. Good morning to you, beautiful lady. Now, Sue, can you just can you just post a link to your fabulous workshops, please? Because Sue is running um, workshops online, so you can do it wherever you are in the world. She's doing that amazing paint pouring, and also she's doing batik. I want to do the batik workshop so much. So if you do the batik workshop, I'm, you might be on it with me. That might put you off. <laughs> Make sure you choose the one I'm not on. Um, but I, I'm so excited to see that. So it's like, like wax resist and you, the, there's some amazing effects you can do. So Sue's teaching that. I'm so excited. Post the link, Sue. Good morning to you, Gemma Crow. How is Tom and how is Faye? Um, Gemma's had some... some um, um, poorliness in your family, haven't you? And um, so can we send Gemma lots of love? Lots of love to the Crow Murphy family. Um, lots of hearts to everybody in that family circle, please, because they need it. Um, and, oh, Fiona's been off sick all week, all weekend. Um, so send lots of love to Fiona. And anybody else who needs love this morning, <laughs> let's share the love. Can you feel the love? I'm not going to sing it. Um, Debbie Baldwin, good morning. Oh, thank you for the stars, Sue. So Sue's just posted mabelirene.co.uk is her website and you'll find loads of interesting, even if you don't want to do the course, you can buy lots of accessories and things. If you want to do dot mandala dot art, she does that as well. She's amazing. Angela Davis, for, thank you for the stars. Petrina Hooper, you're starting to explore your spiritual side. And so thank you for sharing. Thank you. I'm glad you appreciate that. And 
thank you for exploring your spiritual side because there's no better side to explore, let me tell you that. Welcome to the light. Um, thank you for the stars, Nicole. I've got so many thank yous and hellos to say, so please bear with me. We are going to get started, honestly. Elaine Sager. Oh, Elaine, how sweet. You're sending healing to Gemma and family and to Fiona. Oh, everybody's sending so much love. I hope you're feeling it, Gemma. Linda Boyle sent some stars. Good. Thank you so much for <laughs> saying good morning. Alexandra Reynolds is here. Esmeet Kaur is here. Hello. Thank you for the stars, Gemma. Mel Sykes, good morning. Loving the sun today. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Anja. Oh, my goodness. Anja is here. Now, Anja does some amazing retreats in France. Do you want to drop your link to your website if anybody's in France? I want to go on one of your retreats, Anja. You know when COVID's over, I'm definitely coming over to France to do a retreat with you. Um, shall we get going? Shall we? All right. Let us begin. So you can see we have our beautiful butterflies. And um, I saw these in a magazine, these gorgeous butterflies. And they're, they're by a lady called Gisela Graham. Um, and I thought, I want some of those butterflies to put in my garden. So I found some and I ordered them. And I thought, oh, they'd be beautiful for our messages today for the Cosmic New Year. So pick a butterfly. Kavila's here, good morning. Um, so we're going to do these Cosmic New Year messages first. And then if you want to stay around, you can find out what the messages are for the week but I thought we would dedicate most of our time to the, the cosmic new year messages for everyone um and um so do you want number one which is the orange butterfly do you want number two which is the purple sort of violet colored butterfly or do you want number three which is the pink butterfly which one would you like I would advise just choosing one pile and the reason for that is, you know, sometimes you feel drawn to, to one or two or even all three. But these contain very kind of succinct, very sort of specialised channeled messages for you. Um, so I really wouldn't go for two piles. I would stick with the one that you feel most drawn to. And what I want to say to you is this as well. If the messages don't resonate with where you're at at the moment, remember this is a cosmic new year message. So this is a whole year, the whole 365 day cycle. So it might not make any sense to you right now. So just take the messages as they come, accept them, welcome them all in, even though the ones that you don't want to hear, because we always get pile envy don't we i'll choose pile one and pile three will have all the what i consider to be the best messages and that's ego my darlings so don't let that pesky ego get in oh so we did we did some butterfly readings on saturday with my angelic circle so laurie's sticking with the orange from saturday bob swan good morning karen atkinson good morning um if i haven't said good morning to you and you would like it good morning kelly barrett then do pop a comment, Petrina Hooper, Mel Sykes, and um, I would attempt to say hello to you, but I am going to concentrate on the message, messages. Yeah, if you can't hear, try coming out and coming back in again, because that often happens when you, you know, if you, if you go, if a message comes up on you, say if you're watching on your phone and then you go to look at your message, you come back in, you lose the sound, so you have to refresh, you have to come out of the the live and then come back in again that happens when I watch babble and dabble because I'm always flitting about on my phone so let us begin oh you're welcome you're welcome uh, Gemma it's my pleasure it's my way of saying thank you to you all for the beautiful support that you give me so we're going to begin with pile number one orange now if you're patiently waiting for your message and you're getting frustrated because I'm um doing this you know these first you know piles try and take on board anything that's coming through here as well because there's always a message for all of us within these messages if that makes sense okay oh it's 11 11 fiona's just pointed out perfect time to begin eh so let's start with the orange color that you chose and this represents rebirth this is a time of fiery rebirth that's why i've got my citrine there on the altar 
it represents that coming out of the flames, whatever we've been through, we can begin again. This is a fresh cycle and it's a really important time for new beginnings. So you are, you know, they call Aries the um, the adolescent of the zodiac. So it's that first house, it's that reset, the number one. Cut, let's come out with the fire energy. So the element of fire is really important for you, who chose this butterfly. And also the sacral chakra, which is all about creativity, creation, birthing. Now, what is really interesting is I had a dream I was pregnant last night. It's not biologically possible or physically possible. Do you know what I'm saying? Girl, been in lockdown for five months. I'll just leave it there. But I feel as though I've just been reminded that I've got, um, a, a, you know, that, that pregnancy message is all about birth and um, it's all about the, the sacral chakra. It's the place we give birth and where we come from. Um. So I am going to go for this because I, I thought, oh, I haven't chosen a pile. So clearly number one is for me. So, yeah, it's what are you birthing? What are you creating? Just come at it because you're coming from a different energy. So you might have tried to do this in the past. A white feather just floated past the window then. That's almost like a confirmation of what I'm saying. You know, like you might have tried to do something in the past and it didn't work. Well, this is a reboot. This is different. You bring a different energy to it. You're in a different cycle. So bring all of the experience, all of the wisdom, um, you know, so learn from the mistakes because they were powerful ways of helping you to grow and to understand what's the best way to do something. That's the, Those are the best teachers, aren't they? They're failures. Okay, so let's have a look. And we're going to begin our reading with the animal Um the animal totem so what is the the message for you from your animal guide are you ready for this janine was saying sorry i'm just re reading what janine said my, my sister gifted me a reading last week and i was told butterflies were very prominent yes they're very prominent in this um okay so ooh, look at that the orange so you know, I don't look at these cards before I place them down. I don't put them in, in any kind of order to correspond. So when they bring their their synchronicities, just know it's the, the universe, the angels who did that. So we have this beautiful, beautiful parrot with the orange crest, with that fire, almost like a fire on his crown. And it's saying, let sunshine revitalise your soul and colour transform your world. So the parrot's in the jungle. This, you know, reminds me of, um, it's like the Mayan stuff that I've been studying so much of at the moment. It's incredible. Of that power of nature and the force of the symbolism of all of the things around us. And so the parrot is a very noisy <laughs> the parrot can speak as well as sing um it's ma majestic it's colorful it's connected with this sacral chakra so it's saying you know let the sunshine revitalize your soul color transform your world it's about beginning again but not almost like i'm having to start over it's it's that buoyancy that excitement of i'm doing something new and my whole heart, my passion is in this. And um, this almost looks like a phoenix, doesn't it, with the, with the fire colours. It's, I'm not, I fell over and I'm having to start again, all the things went wrong. It's like, I'm excited to start again. I'm excited to wipe the slate clean and get going and begin again. Um, so it is about that majesty, that sovereignty um, and passion. It's very much about passion. So... This bird is asking you to be passionate. The butterfly is asking you to be passionate. Where's the passion? It could be the passion through intimacy. It could be the passion with exploring the things you're passionate about and bringing them to life, birthing them. It could be a passion for creativity, your creative juices flowing. It could be all about being in the moment and being joyful and singing and shouting it out loud to, to everybody. I'm happy. If you're happy and you know it, be a parrot. 
So that is your animal totem for this year. So what I would say about these different animal totems, animal guides, is that you could get a screensaver, find a parrot, put it on your phone or your computer, or your tablet or whatever. You could print a picture out of a parrot or you might just find parrot symbolism turning up in weird ways. You know where somebody sends you a birthday card and it's got a parrot on it and you're just like, oh, that's my animal totem. How did you know? Um, so it, it's really interesting how these things show up in your life. But um, And also what I would urge you to do is to do your own research about what the parrot means spiritually, symbolically. So that's your... Sorry, you lost me for a second. Don't panic. I'm st We're losing a signal. So um, I'm hoping that it will stay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay. Right. So this next card represents your your archetype for this coming cosmic new year. So what is the archetype? The archetype is like the character role we're playing. It's the important tools that are, um, you know, we're being handed to us by the universe. It's the things that we're going to be doing, the energy that we're embracing. Okay, so let's have a look. You are embracing, oh my gosh, look at this, right? I told you that when there's serendipity happening there's synchronicity within the cards the messages so we've got some birds here so birds seem to be important now the bird the first thing that that's coming to my mind is that i haven't said about the birds and the, the parrot and there's birds here is that is the messenger so you've got an important message to convey um so you are stepping into the archetype of the poet the poet and she's got this kind of burnt orange um, coat on and then this headband and when she's speaking she's speaking in symbolic ways she's spreading peace and harmony and love because the, those are doves and they represent that that symbolism of the um, the peaceful nature that having found a place to land you know if we think about the the uh, the myths you know the the bible stories of the dove and how Noah's ark was there floating around for ages and it, Noah kept sending the dove out to see if it could find dry land and then one day it came back with the olive branch in its mouth and it found a place of dry land so that the the ark could come to its resting place and everybody could get back onto the dry land. Um, so this is about that peacefulness, that finding that place where you belong, finding your path. I, I think this is a really important message about that, where you've got a symbolic language and it's important to express it. So um, we'll look at the light side of it, first of all. Um, expresses soul insights in symbolic la language. Gemma Crow, you know, take note. Now, also, I chose this pile. And of course, I've just finished writing my book and got it out there. Um, I'm writing all the time, like every day I'm writing something. I'm writing my crystal um, collective workshops and, you know, the my posts. Um, I'm just in creation mode, but, but it's all done through language. Now, when I finished writing my book, as a as a like a congratulations, Gemma Crow sent me a book about birds, the, the spiritual symbolism of birds. Isn't that interesting that I chose this pile? Very, very interesting. So you know you can't make this stuff up, can you? So what is it that your soul wants to express in symbolic language? So it can be through your writing, through your teaching, it could be through symbols that you're sharing through art. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, we always have to look at the light and shade because we are made up of both. We can't ignore the shadow and always focus on the light because there'll be times when we're grumpy. There'll be times when we're very much in our ego, when we do things that we're not so proud of. And this is about turning a lyric gift to negative or destructive effects. So that's basically, you know, where you communicate, but you communicate angrily with a hostile way of doing it. Well, you know... The, the ultimate shadow attribute of that can be trolling, you know, where people comment on other people's social media and do naughty, nasty things. 
say things to to be um, undermine that other person. So don't do that, or don't be tempted to write a letter, send an email, send a messenger message that will hurt another person's feelings. You know, really think about it. Sometimes it's good to write it down and then just delete it because it's like you've you've expressed it. It's out there, but to not to send it to the person. But um, so the importance of language writing, speaking, teaching, creating is very important for you with the, this number one message, this orange butterfly. And then the, the message for you generally from my Oracle of Wisdom and Beauty deck is, this is lovely because, you know, again, we've got the orange of the giraffe. Isn't that interesting? We've got this kind of theme running through that sort of burnt orange colour and that's the markings on the giraffe's. Um, body neck and I was watching a video my it's really really interesting because on Friday my daughter came home to West Yorkshire she's staying with her dad for a week and then she's going to come to me for two weeks I'm so excited but I got to go and see her and have dinner with her and for some reason she showed me this video of this man who works um he's in the Serengeti he's he lives and and works with um big cats and um these incredible animals she showed me this video that he'd taken on safari and she said, look at these, look at these giraffes running in the Serengeti. And I was saying, oh, I love giraffes. And then here they show up in, in the reading that I chose. So these are so powerful. They've got this long neck. So it's about reaching up to really reach out for what is, what is home to you. Is it a place? Is it a person? Oh my gosh, somebody's at the door. Sorry, I'm just going to have to go get a parcel. always happens. <laughs> I knew I was getting a mail re-delivery because I was out um, and you have to get your mail re-delivered, you can't go and pick it up so <laughs> that was being re-delivered so I had to go and open the door. Oh, out of breath now. So I was saying is home a place? Is it a person? So an important friend or mentor coming into your life? You know, the the sacral chakra energy of this particular choice of cards, if you chose the orange butterfly, is all about us connecting intimately with another. So if you are open to that, then you could be meeting an important soulmate. And it doesn't have to be romantic, but it could be. It could also be taking that to another level. So if you're dating... You could end up moving in together and getting a home together. Or it could be like coming home, you know, like really connecting with important mentors, gurus, teachers, best friend. That's going to become a really important part of your life this year. So this is not about being alone. This is about creating what you want and having that like-minded person by your side helping you and mentoring you or you know just you don't have to be on your own anymore this is about that that whole kind of sharing and you're passionate about something but you suddenly discover that there are lots of other people who are passionate about it as well so what beautiful messages I feel very um very empowered by those I hope you do too so that is your, your, those are your messages. I hope that you've enjoyed those. Number one, butterfly. Number two, butterfly. And, um, remember, I'm going to be doing the angel messages for the week at the end this time. Just doing it slightly differently today. So if you want to hang around and listen to the other messages, but also um, listen to the angel messages for the week, then you're more than welcome to do that. In fact, I'd love it. So this is butterfly number two. 
um, which is the, um, the the beautiful sort of lilac-y purple colour, I would say, which is a cross between the lightness of the wing would be the crown chakra, which is about being open to connecting to your angels, your spirituality, your highest self. And then the the deeper sort of purple here is all about opening your third eye. It's about trusting yourself, trusting your own vibes, your intuition becoming much more heightened. You might start to really go deeper into your spiritual journey um, and start to learn a lot more about spiritual things, your spiritual nature, be much more connected with your guides, your angels, your archangel who's working with you and um, just to understand yourself much more on a soul level and to be very open to that. So that is really beautiful. And um, a crystal that is really good for that. Well, a couple of crystals that are really good for that. So, you know, the, the orange of the sacred chakra I talked about, citrine. Um, it's clear quartz. So we have a piece of clear quartz here. Just a really lovely clear quartz wand. And selenite as well. Is, a, is another really lovely one which we have here which is also called, called satin spa so um, those two very helpful for you okay so um, Nancy's saying that that is your trust is your word of the year yeah well you know if you chose this butterfly that's you that is literally the word associated with that um, believing is seeing so we don't have to see something first before we believe it we believe in something I believe in a higher consciousness a higher power I believe in ourselves and trust in ourselves that we're exactly where we need to be so your animal totem for this year is the rhinoceros still the chatter within to see your true path in life so there you go, another serendipitous um, connection with that butterfly. As I said, I truthfully just shuffle these cards and place them wherever they need to go. So we've got the rhinoceros. Now the rhinoceros is a very steady animal, but when it's angered or when it needs to protect itself, it will rise up and it will use its power and its, its um, big horn, tusk. But generally, you see them just kind of roaming around, just just being very calm about things. They're also very endangered at the moment. Um, so there's a lot of work and a lot of money being raised to try and protect this wonderful animal. Because its horn is very prized, so people, you know, it's an aphrodisiac and all kinds of different things. So it's terrible how they've been hunted. So this is about protection. This is about protecting that right to really be part of that purpose that you're meant to be on. It's like you're going to find over this coming 12 month period, what is your truth? What is your path? Now look, there's another bird here trying to almost like send the message to him and he can't see this bird. It's interesting as well, like the symbolism of that. It's like, you, you know, sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm just not being guided by my angels or my guides. I just, I'm not getting the messages through. And it's about being really open to those messages because the more we have to work at almost understanding the language of the way they're trying to pass those messages on to us and show us the way forward. We can't just kind of wander through life being completely unaware of things. And I was reading something about it's impossible for a butterfly, it's like physically impossible for a butterfly to look at its wings and see how beautiful they are. But other people can see it, see their beauty. And other people will tell us or, or you know, external things will give us signs. And sometimes we're not taking any notice or we don't want to hear it. And this is about you really opening up to how beautiful and amazing you are, what your true path is in life, it's going to come in a bigger way this year and um, be open to all of the signs and the ways that it wants to come through and be presented to you. So are you ready to connect with your path, my loves? 
because you're going to get some messages and your angels want to help you to learn the language in the way that they're communicating with you. So your archetypes are what is the character you're going to be playing, the, you know, stepping into the tools that you're going to use on your journey is the pioneer. So the pioneer has a light bulb moment. This is literally like you might have a spiritual awakening. Now we can have spiritual awakenings continuously, mini ones, huge ones. And I often find that spiritual awakenings, you know, we we imagine that they're going to be like biblical things, like a bush is going to burst into flames above us and a voice from the sky is going to start te talking to us. And we think, oh, right, yeah, now I get it. OK, I've got to write all this down, have I, and communicate it to other people. It doesn't work like that. When I think about spiritual awakenings I've had, they usually come during the time of deep despair, when I am literally at rock bottom, when I'm literally feeling like my belly's on the floor. My belly's on the floor a lot of the time, but you know... <laughs> When you feel lower than a snake's bladder, do you know those times? And it would help if you could actually connect with your highest self during that moment and go, this could be the awakening. This could be the moment where I'm going to have my breakthrough. And Colleen's saying perfect message, trust and true soul path. Absolutely. So it's not going to come gently delivered to you in a beautiful golden envelope that you open and then you go, oh, I feel alive. I'm so excited. It comes usually in the darkest moments, in the, in, in the biggest storms of our life where they're raging and battering and you're just thinking, I can't go on. And then the day after, when you're lying in a crumpled heap, you suddenly get this power from somewhere and you go, I know what I need to do. So welcome in those really deep, dark times, those dark nights of the soul, because the, do the dawn always comes. It's the darkest hour just before the dawn. So pioneering, you know, you can't have new stuff unless you burn away the old, you get rid of the old, and that's what the universe is trying to do with you. And this is a passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. So there's a saying, and I always get it wrong, that to be what you've never been, you've got to do what you've never done. I think I got that right then. Um, and it's scary, isn't it? So sometimes we can have an idea and like that, and we can go, oh, it's so beautiful. And then you're afraid, you're afraid of, executing that idea you, you, your ego starts to tell you nobody's going to want that that's rubbish who are you to do that you've never done it before how do you know it's going to be a success how do you know you can do it um, and it will try and undermine you and try and put all these fences in front of what you're trying to do and who's running your life is it you is it your soul or is it your ego because the ego doesn't exist it's a false self as we discovered this weekend when we did my angel circle we talked about the ego and the intuition and the intuition wants what's best for you your ego wants to undermine you and stop you and it'll pop up in lots of different ways and we can't let it because there's all this beauty being bottled and waiting to get out the shadow side of it is compulsive need to keep moving on so that's when you know like you can have a really great idea and you you put it out there and then you give up on it halfway through because something more interesting comes along or you get another idea and you move on to that and you're like a grasshopper jumping from one thing to another and I've been there because I can totally connect with that shadow the dark side of it can you can just keep on having ideas that never ever get off the ground they never ever become real they never get out there or when we put them out there they get met with not the best re response that you wanted so you just park them and you move on to the next one the lesson is within this you know staying within the power of the idea and crafting and molding it so that it becomes what is right or being patient and waiting for it to to come about in its in its fullest form sometimes we have to wait for divine timing and the the right kind of energy to help us along so your final message comes from my <clears throat> Oracle of Wisdom and Beauty. And this is the number, interesting, the number 13, okay. So in um, the Mayan culture, the number 13 was a super powerful number. So I've been reading all about, studying all about Mayan astrology 
and you have a day sign. So on the day you were born, you have a symbol, a sign, and all of the attributes with that are connected to your purpose, like your pre-conceived self, your self before you came into this incarnation chooses to be born on that day, apparently. Isn't that interesting? And you will then kind of in, inherit or embody all of the things within that day sign. But then you have a tone, a galactic tone, that is not chosen by you and it can, you know, it, it kind of sets the tone for your life. So that's what makes you different from somebody else who's the same day sign. So the number 13 is the highest frequency in the galactic tones. So this is all about you being the highest frequency, which again is all of that crown chakra energy. This is the, the third eye. High vibrational, high frequency. And it doesn't come from stuff that is down here. It doesn't come from your car and your house and the money in your bank account. Those are byproducts of what you're creating from the ideas that you're having, from, you know, that, that spiritual knowing. But when you find your purpose, you connect with that purpose, it brings happiness. And when you're happy, the ultimate is the fulfillment. That's the highest vibration of all. I'm fulfilled because I'm fulfilling. It's not just an inner fulfillment. It's that fulfilling my destiny, my highest. Um, the, the highest point of why I'm here in this lifetime because it's not about trying to be things that other people consider to be good enough or successful it's about you fulfilling your purpose so when you know your purpose you connect with your purpose then there is that inner happiness that we can't even describe what that feels like that sense of knowing you're in the right place doing the right thing and then you're fulfilling your destiny the highest octane the highest tone so do come to my um mayan astrology workshop because you'll find out lots of really interesting things about all these numbers and day signs and um your your mission you know to get to this place isn't it beautiful so that's this is a you know you might be sitting there thinking oh wow those messages are so exciting i can't wait to connect with my higher self believe me it has its ups and downs like i said you know we imagine this enlightenment this awakening is something really gorgeous and as though we're going to be handed something really magnificent and we're just going to wander into it it can feel tough it's gonna it's gonna test you and it's gonna test your faith in yourself and the divine it's gonna make you work hard so you have crumpled forehead trying to figure out these signs but ultimately you'll know that it was well worth the effort and the energy because it's what you came here for. So just do it. In fact, you have no choice. That's what you're here for. Okay. I don't want to put a downer on proceedings, but you know, <laughs> it's got to take some work. All right. And pushing past that ego is the hardest work of all, isn't it? As we know. So if you chose number three, you've been waiting patiently for your message. And you chose that pink butterfly. So let's talk about the pink butterfly. And the pink butterfly is all about the heart. What does the heart want? It's about healing. So the transformation with you, number threes, is about healing, grief, healing, hurt. It could be spiritual pain. It could be karmic debts being healed and erased and wiped out so your heart can be open again. It's about loving yourself and, you know, all of that energy that goes into being love, love and light. It's all there is. And that whole, you know, I was talked about can the butterfly can't see how beautiful it is. And it's maybe you being able to actually find a mirror where you can see yourself and go, gosh, I didn't know I was so amazing. Wow, my heart's filled up with love for myself. And now there's so much love. I have to give it away to others. But start with you. And your crystal is rose quartz. I've got my beautiful rose quartz angel there. 
which is all about universal love, healing, divine, beautiful energy, and the heart. So the heart being full, the heart being open, and the heart being healed as well, in all the ways it needs to be healed. So let us see what your animal totem is. And it is the raven. So look at this. The, the raven's a bird of protection. So any, any kind of black colours um, are, are about protection, about intuition, about psychic abilities and knowing. It's a very strong bird. So even though <clears throat> sometimes we may feel vulnerable, the strength can come within vulnerability that's showing our vulnerability or admitting our faults. So this is your animal guide, your animal totem for the next 365 days. The raven, listen to your intuition to receive a message from the world of spirit. So the spirit world wants to communicate with you through your heart to make you feel better about yourself and to help you heal as well. Now, when we heal, so sometimes um, we have to go through a process of pain in order to heal. So I just have to give that warning. So whatever needs to be cut out or to, to you know, come out of you can leave a scar. It can make you feel more vulnerable, weak and um, wounded before it starts to heal and get better. So for example, the coronavirus jab, I've heard some people are just having the jab and they're fine. Other people are feeling really sick with it. You know, and um, so the, the medicine can make us ill before we get better or before we're protected. So it's, it's kind of a good analogy really, isn't it? Um, so here we have the archetype. So what is the archetype that you're embodying? What is the character role that you're playing over the next um, 12 months? Now, interesting, we've got the child of nature. So this is the, the green of the heart chakra. Oh, you know, when we're in, working in the heart space, when we're healing the heart chakra, it means that we go back to our kind of childlike self. So this is healing your inner child. This is allowing that beautiful child that saw wonder and magic in everything coming alive again. And I always say that what happened to her or him that little girl or little boy that used to dance around the garden and pretend that they were riding a horse, you know, <laughs> had a broom handle. Or me and my sister, we used to be really obsessed with the Cottingley fairies. Have you ever heard of the Cottingley fairies? It's basically these two little girls who said that they'd seen fairies in their garden and they took photographs of them. I think it was around the 1940s. And these photographs were so realistic, they looked like the fairies were real and nobody knew whether they were telling the truth or not and believed that there were fairies in the garden. And then one of the sisters died when she was in her 80s and the other sister went on TV, this is a lot of years later, and actually admitted that they made it all up and they drew these amazing pictures and took photographs of them. And I was devastated because I had believed all along, me and my sister used to always be looking in the garden for fairies and we believed, like, we said, oh, I saw a fairy then, did you wear? Oh, she's gone. Um, and we kind of wind each other up. Um, so this is about you really connecting with the magic in your life. It's believing in magic, going back to your childlike self, healing that part of yourself that wants to, just wants to, live in innocence and love um it's about being encouraged by animals and nature so you might find that you get a new pet um during this 12 month period or it come and comes and finds you you know as animals often do and it'll become like a soulmate to you it can be about you know if you're creating that you're so inspired by nature and so get out and and really explore i went on a walk with my friend the other day and oh my goodness we saw these trees and the way the bark had fallen off the trees there were all these pictures in the trees and they were so phenomenal I was going look there's a dolphin look there's a penguin <laughs> and I didn't have my phone with me because I deliberately left it at home I didn't want to be distracted by my phone so she took some pictures 
Um, but it's about that being, you know, getting, so you, you're going to be getting symbols. You're going to be receiving messages that, you know, be open when you're out in nature. You're going to get messages galore to show you your way forward, to show you how to heal. The medicine is in within nature as well. There's a lot of healing medicine for you with being around animals, being around nature. You might create things that have animals on them. You might have a logo that has an animal or an important object from nature. Um, it, it's, you know, however this comes to you, nature's really important in your path forward and in your healing. So you might suddenly you know, um, bring herbalism into your diet. Um, you might bring flower therapy in to help you heal, you know, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Um, and the it's almost as though the, the nature angels, so angels like Jophiel and Sandalfon, those two archangels want to work with you through the heart and, and nature and the earth. So those two archangels are really important for you this year. So then um, our message for, oh, I forgot about the shadow. Let's talk about the shadow. Is it abusing animals, people and the environment? So it's about not, it's, it's kind, of, kind of being an ego. So I talked about this on Saturday. It's like, well, we don't have concern. Like we don't notice the magic in nature. We just kind of wander through it and we, we leave our rubbish. You know, we've got, um, we ate, had a sandwich and we left the, 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 um, the bag sandwich came in we just chucked it um i saw these people that last summer that they all went to the beach in bournemouth and they left so much rubbish on the beach it was just horrendous and lots of local people had to go out in a massive task force to clear the beach up because it was threatening the, the wildlife it's about being conscious of your role and not abusing that it's very important it's about thinking about recycling it's like how can i protect the earth you might want to donate to earth related charities and recycling and all of that kind of stuff you might suddenly find yourself compelled to connect um or not to think it's somebody else's problem i don't have to deal with it so i can just carry on doing what i'm doing it's like we're all connected we all need support from one another so um your last message is from the oracle of wisdom and beauty and it is the beautiful lion so again, some more kind of animal symbolism for you. We've, we've already had the, the giraffes earlier. Um, and here we have the lion. So this is your strength. Your strength comes in the healing. Your strength comes in the vulnerability. Your power comes from noticing as above, so below. So what is going on in your mind? Are you connecting with your highest self? Are you open to these messages that are coming in through this raven? through the, the, the earth spirits, the, the nature, the animal spirits. So another totem, a second totem for you would be the, the lion. And it's about you living your best life through making the most of every moment, being grateful in the moment. I spoke at the beginning of waking up and seeing the blossom on my tree that been like an absolute explosion of the blossoms have really come out. And I was like, oh, I'm so grateful for my blossom. But not every morning do I notice things and, and I'm grateful. And I, I made a note to myself to say, I'm not just going to be grateful for the miracles. Like that looked like a miracle. I can't even take a picture that shows you how spectacular it looks from my bedroom window. But I want to wake up every day and feel like this. Just notice small things and um, and really be grateful for them. And that's what you know it's saying to you. It's like the circle of life with the lion that they, um, you know, they, they don't just go around eating all the zebras because there'd be no zebras left. It's a respect thing. It's about saying, you know, the zebra is here to feed my whole family and we only eat until we're full and that's what we do. And it's, it's that kind of protecting that ecosystem. Everybody's got a predator. Unfortunately, man... <laughs> doesn't have a predator and just goes around stomping on everyone else so it's about you know get involved in it. you you are responsible for healing the earth and for being a part playing your part in you know where where is your place in the earth and where's your responsibility where does the earth connect to what you do 
um, this year and how is it going to inform what you do? It might have some really important symbolism for your work, for your purpose. So there we go. Those are the messages for um, for the, uh, the Cosmic New Year for you all. I hope you enjoyed them. I'm just going to end by giving us some um, angel messages for the week. So um, let me know how that was for you. Did it resonate? Did you enjoy? Um, Nikki Whitfield, please don't share YouTube links. Thank you. Could you remove your, your post? Thank you very much. I've been getting lots of people sharing, trying to share watch parties and all kinds of external links um, in my page at the moment. It's just rather unfortunate. Please don't do it. And um, I'm just going to draw two cards. And also, I just have to point out, um, something happened on Saturday um, where somebody set up a page in my name as Angel Lady with a hyphen. Um, thankfully, got um, YouTube to... Sorry, I got Facebook to take it down. But what they've done is they've set up um, a website with my, my um, photo on it and they're pretending to be me and offering a prize draw trying to get you to click through to enter this prize job. You have to give your card details. So I just want to reiterate while I'm live here, I never do free readings. So if anybody contacts you pretending to be me saying, here's a free reading, I don't do free readings. I'm sorry I don't do free readings, but I just don't have the time and energy. Um, I don't believe in it either because when something's free, we don't tend to appreciate it, do we? And also, I don't do prize draws. I just, I never have, never will. So if there's a prize draw and I'm saying, enter my prize draw and you're going to win all this stuff. I don't do prize draws because I just don't. <laughs> and I never will in the future, okay? And if I ever do, because I guess you should never say never, should we? If I ever do, I'll come on here and do it live. I won't do it through messages and posts. Thank you, I'm glad you, you found that helpful. So, messages for the week, the first part of the week, my loves. It's all about family. Oh, but isn't that family such a blessing? I know not always. <laughs> but this is about health, it's about the family coming together, it's strength, it's the root chakra, it's our roots, our ancestry as well could be coming through and guiding us. And it's the love of that, the security of the family and really appreciate pre oh. I'll start again, appreciating our family, where we came from, those who are around us in spirits and in our minds, as well as it would be lovely to connect with them physically, wouldn't it? My beautiful girl's going to be coming home next Friday, and um, so at the moment, just knowing she's in Yorkshire is just making me feel so much better about everything. So this is about your family life, it's about finding security and magic in the little things. Because the little things are really the big things. Because when we don't have them anymore, we mourn them, don't we? So really appreciate what you've got, my darlings. Especially connecting with your ancestry. Connecting with the people that you love. And if you don't have that connection with your family, you know, some, some of us are not always able to, to feel that strong connection with our family. We're estranged or whatever. It's... Who do you call family? Who do you call your tribe? Connect with them and feel the love. And then as we go towards um, the end of the week and the weekend, the angel message is it's all about grounding. It's about earthiness. The earth seems to be a really important message within all of this, doesn't it? And it's about saying, you know, you've, you've got strong foundations in place. You might not be seeing... Everything happening, everything growing, because the, the cycle of growth takes time. So we're in the spring here in the the Northern Hemisphere. We're, we're um, in the Cosmic New Year. It's spring here. And this is the um, that feeling of knowing that what we've planted is on its way to growth. That we'll see those green shoots coming through, but we won't see the, the full harvest of it just yet. It's about taking... Um, strength from knowing that we've planted some amazing things. Seven is the lucky number. It's the number of purpose. Whatever you're embarking upon right now as well, you might be coming to the end of a cycle and beginning a new one in terms of your career path, your life path, whatever you feel passionate about or purposeful about. And it can take time to come to fullness, but just know that putting one foot in front of the other every day, pursuing it in all the ways that you want to pursue it, 
it's going to be so rewarding and fulfilling for you financially and you know with strength in your life it's a beautiful thing so if you would like to um check out my um my own astrology workshop it's happening on um the 7th of april which is a really auspicious day in my own calendar um i'd love you to join me it's just 10 pounds and um i will post the link in a proper um post when i come out now I'd love to see you there and you also get to find out what your Mayan astrology sign is and what is your galactic tone. So exciting. I can't wait to share it all with you. So lots of love. I hope you've enjoyed this reading today. I hope it empowers you on your path forward and um, sending you lots of love and angel blessings always. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>